Praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome to the live stream coming from the Refuge Temple Church here in Columbia, South Carolina. Refuge Temple is that church in the heart of the city with the people of the city in its heart. As we continue in this time of pandemic and we see numbers begin to spike, as there is a surge with the COVID cases rising, I'm reminded of a song that we used to sing growing up that said, Jesus is a healer, and the world does not believe it, but Jesus is a healer and he heals all the time. You know, he healed the sick, and he raised the dead, so there's no need for us to be afraid because Jesus is a healer, and he heals all the time. As we prepare to go before the throne of grace, as we often do, I'm going to ask that you would extend your hands towards me, and as I, along with the praise team, we will extend our hands toward you, and we will begin to bombard heaven for healing on this morning. We need our God to come in and heal the land, there is indeed a bomb in Gilead, but I heard the word of God say that those who pray, believing, will receive a miracle. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek his face, that he would heal the land. So let us go before the throne of grace right now. Lord, we come before you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Lord God, thanking you first of all for your grace and your mercy. Lord God, thanking you for it's once again that you met us by our bedside, oh God, and you woke us up this morning. You didn't allow our beds to become our cooling board, and for God, for that, we say thank you. Lord God, you didn't allow the death angel to come in and take us in our sleep, and God, we thank you because the blood was on the doorpost, and once again, we rose in victory. Lord God, we rose to tell you thank you. We came together to give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. And God, though we can't meet together in this physical realm, we come together before your throne and bow ourselves down. And God, as the angels cry holy, we cry worthy is the lamb slain from the foundations of the world. God, we know that you are a healing God. God, we call on you right now for healing. Lord, you said that you sent your son and you said that the government would be upon his shoulders. You said that it was by his stripes that we were healed. And God, we thank you right now for healing. Lord, Lord God, we speak to infirmity right now. We thank you for healing of the mind. We thank you for healing in our bodies. We thank you for healing in our hearts. Uh, Lord God, we call high blood pressure down right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, Lord God, we call confused minds regulated right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, Lord God, we speak to the spirit of anxiety and we command peace right now uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, God, we come against irregular heartbeat right now uh, in the mighty name of Jesus and we command that heart to beat according to your will according to the way that you made it in your likeness and in your image God we ask that you would get down in the arteries and we command arteries to be unclogged right now in the mighty name of Jesus I don't know what your infirmity is but lay hands on yourself and say in the name of Jesus I command myself to be healed speak to your infirmity right now in the mighty name of Jesus and command the works of the cross to be made manifest in your body if you need healing in your mind lay hands on your head and command it to be so by the blood of Jesus I don't know what it is but God stands ready he stands sure to deliver in the mighty name of Jesus God we send healing upon 95 we send deliverance to the west we speak salvation salvation to the east. God cover this land in the blood of Jesus Christ. There is a bomb in Gilead and it's healing for the nation. God, we beseech you by the mercies of God that we present our bodies a living sacrifice. God, whatever you see in us that's not right, take it out and strengthen us. God, we want to be saved. God, we want to be whole. But most of all, we want to be ready in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your winds of deliverance blow. Sweep over our hearts, oh God. Heal. We commend the works of the cross to be made manifest in every believer, in everyone that's watching. We command the blood of Jesus be made whole. In the mighty name of Jesus, be made whole by the works of your son, Jesus Christ. And God, because we believe you, 
we lift our voice and give you the glory. God, because we believe you're right in your home, begin to bless the God of your salvation. Right in your home, begin to put your hands together and tell the Lord we thank you.
somebody we came to give God praise on today. Hallelujah. Whatever it is, God, we want you to just, just bless us on this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We came to magnify and praise his holy name for the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is. He is. Hallelujah. How many know that whatever it is that you need from the Lord, you can have. All you got to do is speak it into the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever it is, just speak it into the atmosphere. If you need healing, if you need if you, if you need salvation, just speak it into the atmosphere on this morning. Hallelujah.
that says if you decree a thing and then if you turn over it says that the power and life and death lies in the tongue right wherever you are I decree and I challenge you to begin to open your mouth and speak into the atmosphere hallelujah what it is that you need God to do he is faithful and he's just to perform that which you speak he said I've come for your words when Daniel was in the lion's den and he began to pray to his father which art in heaven he said I heard you the first time he said but this time I've come for your words come on and give God something to come for come on and give God something to come for if it's healing that you need speak it into the atmosphere if it's deliverance that you need speak it into the atmosphere Come on, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. Oh, yes, God, I shall have what I decree. So I'm going to shed some up. I'm going to shed some up. I'm going to shed some up. Oh, I'm going to shed some up. Oh, I'm going to shed some up. Lord, we speak it in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we bless you and we magnify you now because you are our God. Our faith and our trust is in you. And Father, we take you at your word. We said that before one word shall fall to the ground. Hallelujah. Oh, merciful and wonderful Savior. You are our God. You spoke and it was. And Father, we thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I've come before you to deliver your announcements for Sunday, July 19th, 2020. You're invited. We continue in holy convocation. And you, our listening audience and our viewing audience, you are invited to be a part of our virtual holy convocation the 101st Holy Convocation of the Church of our Lord Jesus Christ. We continue this evening as we begin at 6.45 p.m. with a trip down memory lane. And then at 7 p.m., you will hear the word of God coming from our presiding apostle, Apostle Dr. James I. Clark, Jr. Now, 
there are two ways for you to be a part of this evening worship. You can view it by going to watch.whojc.org. That's watch, W-A-T-C-H, dot whojc dot org. Or you can dial in to 929-299-4909. You're invited to continue with us in prayer each and every Monday night, beginning at 7 p.m. We are a family. And we, there's an old saying that says a family that prays together stays together. And we thank God for his keeping power. He has been gracious to us. So let us continue. Let us be steadfast. And let us be fervent in prayer. So meet us around God's altar every Monday night from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. You're invited to be a part of all of our live services. We will stream live every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. and every Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. You can view us via YouTube by subscribing to the church's YouTube channel of Refuge Temple, Columbia, South Carolina. You can also view us via our Facebook Live by going under Refuge Temple, Columbia. If you know of someone that this ministry may, these services will be a blessing to, and they do not have access to YouTube or Facebook, you can share with them the dial-in number of 720-650-3030 by using access code 092757. Again, that number is 720-650-3030, and that access code is 092757. Immediately following our morning worship, we will have our prayer lines open. If you are in need of prayer, you can dial into the church office at 803-754-9420 for prayer. If you have a special prayer request, and would like to speak with our pastor, Pastor Reed, you can do so by contacting the church office, again, at 803-754-9420, between the hours of 9 a.m. and 2 p.m., Monday through Friday. If this ministry has been a blessing to you, we would be delighted to hear your testimonies, your words of encouragement and of support. You can send all correspondence to Refuge Temple Church, 0450 Argent Court, Columbia, South Carolina, 29203. Again, if our being here has been a blessing to you, we would be delighted to hear your testimonies, your words of encouragement and of support. Please send your correspondence to Refuge Temple Church, 4450 Argent Court, Columbia, South Carolina, 29203. There's a song that we sing and a lot of churches are singing and it is simply says open your mouth and say yes Lord. The power again of life and death lies in your mouth. I don't know about you but I plan on life so I'm going to speak into the atmosphere those things that are of God those life giving words that come from the altar of God because he said whatever you bind on earth I'll bind in heaven and whatever you loose on earth I'll loose on heaven so let this week be the week of the open mouth and blessings. Let us receive at this time our praise team with a praise and worship medley. And immediately following them, the next voice you will hear will be that of the pastor of this house, Bishop Sylvester K. Reed. Let us receive them both at this time as they come. encourage someone this morning that it won't always be like this, that God is turning things around in your favor on this morning.
such an awesome God to us, for how you've kept us even in the midst of this pandemic, oh God, how you've watched over us, how you've provided for us, Lord, we had food to eat, we had shelter over our heads, you are an awesome God, it is during this time, Lord, we have learned to talk and communicate with you, we thank you, Lord, for listening to our prayers and hearing the words that were uttered out of our mouths. Now, God, send a word that might heal and deliver and set free your people. Do this, God, as only you can do, and we will glorify you for being a good God. Thank you, Lord, right now. Thank you even now, Lord. Thank you right now for how wonderful you've been and how we praise and magnify your holy name. Now, Lord, bless the house that we're in. Bless the people that we come in contact with, God. Do this and we will glorify your holy name and praise you for being such a wonderful God. Thank you in advance. And may the people of God just shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everyone. And greetings in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank each and every one of you for tuning in this morning. Amen. We thank each and every one of you that have taken time out of your busy schedules on a regular basis since Thursday to listen to the virtual conference that is going on with the Church of Allah, Lord Jesus Christ. There have been um, uh, powerful messages that have been preached, powerful teaching that has been done every afternoon, and a powerful worship word that has been given every night. Amen. We want you to tune in, tune in on tonight at 7 o'clock that you might hear our presiding apostle give a prolific message for the time such as this. But for right now, we want those of you that are listening via YouTube, uh, listening via Facebook, and those of you that are listening via telephone, to turn your homes into a sanctuary just for about the next 30 minutes. Amen. And we believe that the God we serve will visit you. I believe that healing is in the air. Amen. I believe that deliverance is in the atmosphere. I don't care what the devil's throwing at you. You will be victorious. Amen. Scream at somebody and say, victory is on the way. We will continue to know that victory is here. We glorify his name. I'm in the need of victory. As a matter of fact, we know that the God we serve is about to do something as only he could do. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We are so grateful to him. Turn with us to the book of James. Amen. Chapter number five. Reading to you here in verses 17 and 18. The book of James, chapter number five, verses 17 and 18. 
It reads to your hearing, and Elias was a man that was subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth its her fruit. May the Lord have the blessing to the reading of his word and sanctify it deep within your heart as Jesus Christ can only be the one to bless you in a tremendous way. Look at someone in your proximity, in your sanctuary, and just say, it's praying time. It's, it's praying time. We are so grateful that this is a powerful story. I tried to begin it last on Wednesday night, but we will continue it all that we might uh, give you all that the Lord wants you to hear concerning prayer at this time. Here it is, it is uh, no major background information about the man Elias, Elijah that was given in the Holy Scriptures, amen, just a brief characterization of as he was a Tishabite. His name simply means my God is Yahweh. We do not hear a lot about him, we understand that he comes on the scene out of nowhere and begins to proclaim the word of God. I believe the reset button has been pushed, and that is the time for us now to talk about who God is. Amen. As much as we're doing so many other things, there's only so much Netflix, there's so much HBO, and so much uh, Showtime and stars that we can watch. Amen. And definitely there's so much news that we can take. Amen. As you sit there and watch the news, you will be depressed. Amen. By the time the first 30 minutes are over, and if you're sitting there watching it around the clock and listening to all of the commentators, amen, and the news individuals that are trying to keep us informed, amen, with particular information, it seems to be a lot for us to understand exactly what is going on. Here it is. We find ourselves in a position that the enemy is trying to destroy us, but there is a remnant, a people of God that is still here that knows how to pray. Amen. Knows that prayer changes things. Elijah was such a man. We understand that he had prayed for some times, and I asked the question, there's those of us that are here that have been praying continuously over time and time again, asking God to do something for us. And it seems that the more we pray, the more we do not get an answer. But we are faithful in understanding that God is in control. Here it is. Some of us have been praying for some 10 years for the Lord to send us a husband, to send us a wife, amen, to heal our children, and it just hasn't come yet. But I'm here to tell you that if you are faithful, God will be faithful to you. Here it is. I want you to know that in this time amen, of where in which we're living in, and I begin to understand it a little more and more that we found ourselves in the beginning of this year hearing about a pandemic, but by the time March came in, we were in the middle of a pandemic. Here it is, April, May, June, July, amen, we are still in the pandemic, in pandemic, but we trust God to keep us and to be a way maker. Here he is, he finds himself praying on a consistent basis, saying, how can God heal and how can God deliver? Here it is, can you imagine this young man? Here he is, he's never been heard of before. We do not know his, his, his educational background, but he had a belief in God that he would open doors for him. Amen, here it is, he must have felt the same way that we felt. Amen. He's going into a position where he's never been in before. He has to deal with Ahab and Jezebel, which are two characters within the Holy Scriptures. Here they are. They're dealing with the problems of the time. Amen. It is him that goes into the courtroom, excuse me, into the courtyard and into the castle, if you want to please him, the kingdom house where Ahab the king and his wife abided, lived in, and still found themselves saying to them, it's going to not rain. I'm going to shut up the heavens. The most important component to that whole story was that he prayed so earnestly on a continuous basis that God heard, heard his request. Yeah. 
and shut up the heavens. Did not any rain, did not any dew fall on the ground for some three and a half years. Here it is. Could you imagine having that much power that whatever you pray for, God hears and answers. Here it is. He meets with, he meets with King Ahab and, he, and then he finds himself after three and a half years, finds himself in a position where he has never been in before. He invites them, amen, to a challenge. He invites them to the mountaintop of Mount Carmel. It's a hard image for us to look at, a hard image of bravery that we have never seen before, a man had never even heard of, that Elijah had to attend the mountaintop meeting. He finds himself going up to Mount Carmel where he had never been in before, and there he was alone. He was not with a whole bunch of people. There was not a great congregation, amen, not a mega congregation, not even a small congregation. It was just him and maybe a servant or two that was with him. And while he was there, we find that there was 950, amen, of the followers of Baal that found themselves there to pray and to worship their God. Amen. He gives them a choice. He says, let the God that be God be God today. Let him that answers by fire be God. Here it is. So I'm told that the Baal begins, the Baal worshipers begin to build what they consider to be an altar. And as they begin to build an altar and prepare it, amen, they began to call on Baal about dancing and shouting, amen, you know what I'm talking about, trying to make a spectacle of it, trying to wake their God, to send them some words, amen, but the Bible says there was no response. And it is like Elijah that knows who the true God is. I want to let you know that there is confidence in being a child of God. Amen. That he said, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. I will be with you always, even to the ends of the earth. There is confidence in being a child of God. I need to say that again. There is confidence in being a child of God. That when you are wholly following him... He will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. No weapon that is formed against you has the ability to prosper, that you are a child of God. Whatever you speak into the atmosphere will become a part of who you are. Somebody ought to say, Lord, I need healing right now. Lord, I need deliverance. Lord, I need more knowledge of who you are. Whatever you speak out of your mouth it will come to pass that's right speak it in your homes amen claim your children claim your husband claim your family your siblings to be saved and to be delivered here it is we understand that he begins to ridicule even the Baalites and he begins to tell them that maybe there's a reason why your God isn't answering maybe he's sleep maybe he stepped out amen I am persuaded and understand that Elijah knew that my God never sleeps Amen. He's always listening. He's always in tune to whatever I need to hear and whatever I say. Amen. He's so busy. You find him that the prophets of Baal begins to shout even louder. Amen. And they begin to slash themselves with swords and spears until they were bleeding. They were calling on a God that couldn't hear. Amen. They were calling on a God that could not answer. I am persuaded. Amen. That the God I serve hears my I request, amen, because I have been walking before him and magnifying his name. Here it is. They begin to shout. They begin to go through all of the stuff, amen. They continue until the day, okay, all through the day, amen. They're taking turns, screaming and hollering, calling, but it seems that the more they call, the deafer he becomes, if that's the way to say it. Amen. They could not hear anything that was seen. They could not understand what they were talking about about the prophet suddenly exhausted from all of their activities throughout the heat of the day Elijah then called the people to come closer as he took I believe 12 stones one that represented each of the tribe of, Jude, of, Jude, of Israel and he puts and makes an altar to give God the glory amen and after he had built an altar not only built it be ripped but rebuilt the altar amen he finds himself in a place that he had never been could you picture the scene or could you understand the scene 
seen quite as the contrast from the earlier part of the day that there was all of this noise amen but then there was this quiet man a man that knew how to lay before God I want to let you know that there's God that will answer your prayer if you automatically trusted him one quietly man one quiet man heaving the stones into place and compared to the 950 prophets that were shouting for Baal amen then Elijah dug a trench around the altar and he laid the wood on the altar and added the offering and as he began to do this at this point it seemed that it is all in readiness but then Elijah surprises them amen they thought that once he had dug the trenches and, and placed the altar and put the wood on that it was already done amen but then he pulls a surprise out he's watching amen and learning and understanding and hearing the word he tells the people of God the people that are with him to go get him some water amen he takes four large jars of water and he pours it on the offering amen could you imagine him taking the water and pouring it on the altar wetting up the wood amen wetting up the sacrifice and the water runs he all over the altar and he tells them to go down and do it again amen he tells them to do it about three times so much so that the water has overflowed even on the rocks and ran into the trenches amen the God I serve can do the most most difficult stuff amen I don't know about you but somebody has to understand that God does not just do the easy stuff he's not a God of peanut butter and jelly he can do anything that you ask him to do I believe that somebody can scream even right now he's a healer amen he's healed me of cancer oh God he's healed me of COVID-19 he's a real God he has taken down my blood pressure oh God he's a God that can do difficult stuff here he is he finds himself that after three times amen they have saturated the altar saturated oh God the wood and saturated the offering amen where the water has dripped through amen and made even the wood wet I'm a, a city boy almost country boy amen and I know that you can't take wet wood and make it burn amen you have to find a way Cheryl to dry it out amen before it would burn Amen. But the God I serve, oh God, he can do the impossible. Hey God, he can do it. You're saying, Reed, why are you talking like that? In the midst of where we are in, there's a reason for it. And when he's ready, oh God, he will show up and show out. Here he is. The Bible does not say how far the people had to go to get the wet water. Oh, to get the water does not show how much or far they had to walk all they tell us that they was on the mountain top amen I, my guess is that it took some while because the drought was of three years it took a while for them to find a stream mm, that had water in it that could oh my god get enough to fill the barrels and take them up amen they took time to go there but Elijah waited and quietly prayed I don't know about you but there have been some situations that before I talk amen before I open my mouth I said a quiet prayer and I said Lord give me the words in order to say oh God open up my mouth at the right time say what needs to be said at the right time and if I'm not to talk, shut my mouth. Hey, God, let me speak in the word. Let me see that you're in contact. I don't want you to think that it's me, God, that's doing it. I want them to know that it's you in operation. Here you are, the people, oh God. Amen. See and understands. He says, let him, hey, God, that answers by fire be God. And there is a pond that when they look as the trenches fill, there is no doubt that this is has to be an act of God uh, there's no doubt that God has to be in position uh, amen there's no doubt that he has to be the one uh, that is doing it I'm going to make the situation impossible uh, amen under the voice and the power of God I'm going to see uh, that there's no answer there's no question mm, God uh, if God is in control uh, here it is that there was so much water on the wood uh, and the 
altar that it began to be soggy. Amen. There's nothing like soggy cornflakes. Here it is. It was soggy. But while it was being soggy, God was going to work. Amen. Elijah could not have started to fire himself. There was no way that he could set a match to wet wood. Amen. And make it burn. He was ready. He got on his face. That's what it is, church. It's time for us to pray and time for us to cry out and say, Lord, work a miracle. Hey, God, solve the problem. And if you don't solve and put a bubble around us, amen, keep us under your protective arms that no weapon, nothing that is thrown against us has the ability to prosper. I need some folk up in here to throw their hands up and say, cover me, Lord. That's my prayer that you cover me. Watch over me. No matter who I come in contact, keep me under the blood. Let goodness and mercy walk with me. Let goodness and mercy cover me. Let them go before me. Let they can run interference with every device that the enemy is throwing out. I know God can I know he can do it. Amen. They found themselves in a position, God, that they had never been in before. Amen. The people immediately fall on the ground. Oh, God. And while he's praying, amen, there comes a sound of fire and a rumbling of lightning. And it saps up the wood, the water. Amen. It evaporates the water. Amen. It burns up the wood. Amen. And it destroys, oh God, even the sacrifice. I've come to give you a word. If you pray, the God I serve will walk with you through your storms. If you pray, the God you serve will come in your life and begin to move. I know we live in a world that the only way to worship God is through the dance. Amen. This praise breaks all over the place. But I've come to give you a word. If you know how to pray, amen, that will be your praise break. If you know how to cry loud and stand loud and lift up your voice like a trumpet in Zion, the God I serve will move on your life. I've learned how to cry loud. I've learned learn how to pray. Here it is. He begins to sap it up. They begin to take all the water. Amen. And when God had operated and when he had showed his hand strong, amen, even the realites, even the bailites, amen, immediately fell on the ground and acknowledged the Lord it to be God. Amen, they could have been the end of the story. That could have been all of it. That he had won all the battle. You know how he then kills every demon. Oh God, every other believer that didn't believe in God. Y'all know the story. That could have been the end. Amen. He could have called every false prophet and taken him into the valley and destroyed him. But then there comes a time. Amen. In verse 41 of 18 of first king that Elijah says to King Ahab, he said, eat and drink for there's a sound of heavy rain. Amen. He tells him it's time that God loose the rain it's time for God to loose the anointing. It's time for God to send the blessings. He tells him to get ready because the rain is coming. And then he does something so spectacular. Amen. He doesn't go to the room and look out the window to see what kind of precipitation is in the airway. He does not look to see if the clouds are 
black parent. But what he does is fall on his face. I've come to give you a word. If you want a miracle, all you have to do is learn how to pray. Elijah prayed and he called his servant. He said, go Akasha and see what's about to happen. He tells him to get up. And as the man gets up, oh God, he runs to wherever and sees on the mountain. And he looks and says, I see nothing. Amen. There's not even a cloud in the air. Amen. I'll give you a word. The other day I was riding in my car and the sun was shining bright. Amen. And it was still hot. But my windshield wipers came on. That even in the midst of the sunshine, rain will fall. Amen. I seen God. And while they were absolutely doing it, they found themselves in a position where they had never been in before he comes back and says to Elijah, I don't see no rain. Amen. I heard. Elijah said, go again. Amen. He runs one more time because he was obedient to the man of God. He ran to the mountain and when he got there, oh my God, you thought the rain was coming. He comes back and said, there's no more rain. I don't see any clouds. Their heart during black and there aren't any precipitation that is being placed in their life. But I've come to give you a word. When are you going to send the rain? You've already prayed, men of God, that the rain stop. Can you restart it? Can you be a position to make it re-rain again? And I heard him say, Akko, that I'm going to send you again. That's the third time. Oh God, some of us stop praying if we don't get a miracle the first time. But if you pray, the Lord will answer. My mama prayed that my daddy get the Holy Ghost. She got it in 1967 when she filled with the Holy Ghost. And she had been trying to get my father to learn how to accept the Lord as a personal savior and receive the Holy Ghost. He was an AME preacher. He had already thought he knew enough about God. But mama prayed, oh God, amen, and prayed. For 21 long years, she prayed and cried out to God. For 21 long years, she kept calling his name. And one morning, he got up from work and came in the house and said, I'm going to church. I'm what church you're going to? I'm going to Refuge Temple because I want to receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. 21 years later, at a holy convocation, amen, in Detroit, Michigan, my father spoke in tongues because she didn't give up praying. Some stuff you got to keep on praying for. Some stuff you got to keep on acting about. Some stuff you got to keep believing. I believe God is about to reset even America. I believe that the God I serve is about to change this coronavirus. The reset button has been pushed. I believe it's praying time. I believe, oh my God, it's time to cry out. I believe you ought to pray that the Lord will send healing, that the Lord will send deliverance. It's praying time. Pray. Hey, God. And as he began to pray on the sixth time, he went there. And by the time he got to number seven, you know the number, the number of perfection. Y'all know the number, the number of completion. By the time he got there, about the seventh time, he looked on the wall and looked out. Oh, and he saw a small cloud about the size of a man's hand. Amen. Coming this way. He ran down and told Elijah what he saw. He said, hitch up, oh God, your chariot and run and beat the 
the rain. I've come to give you. You have an understand that the rain is following you. The rain is coming your way. You got to understand. I'm ready for the anointed. I'm ready for the breakthrough. I'm ready for the glorious time. I may not get in the house. I may not walk in the refuge, but I'm a dance where I am. I'm a let the rain fall on me. Let it fall. Let the drops from heaven fall on me. Lord, I hear showers of blessings so refreshing that's falling on me. Let it rain. Let it rain. Let it rain. Let the anointed rain on me. Let the power operate. Let the glory operate. It's praying time. It's worship time. I dare you to give him your best praise. Even in your house. Even in your car. Oh, yeah. Hey, man, finally, when the servant returned with the news that there was a small cloud over from the sea, Elijah sent the servant to the king and told him to hitch up your chariot and hurry down the mountain before it's about, it's just getting ready, the rain is coming. He said, for three years, the land has been in a severe drought. Amen. I'll tell you that it was a difficult time. That the result was everything was turning away from God. Amen. But the moment, amen, Elijah had faith to hear the rain was coming. Everything changed. I need you to be a positive force. Look at somebody say it's getting ready to happen. Amen. Be a positive force. Let everybody know it's getting ready to happen. You can't stop it. You might as well get on it. It's getting ready. It's getting ready to happen. I can see a breakthrough. I can see a deliverance. I can see a change on the way. Open up your mouth and say, let it rain. Let it rain.
Thank you.